Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can save optimized images from Photoshop. So to get started we're going to open up Photoshop and here you can see one of the uh, files I used in a recent tutorial for creating enhanced eyes. So let's say that we've gotten to a final stage with our project and we want to save it out um, for use on the web or in an email or for print or whatever other uh, application you might have. So what you can do, um, or what some of you might be doing, is going to File and then Save As. Now you can go to this little tab here and you can go down to things like JPEG and save them out. But you don't have as many options as you do if you uh, use the optimization uh, techniques in Photoshop. So what I'm going to show you is you can go to File and then Save for Web and Devices. Now some of you might not know that that exists, but this is definitely the best way to save your images. So if you go to that, it's going to bring up this, uh, this box here. And here you can see that we have quite a few options. So let me start running you through some of them. Over here on the left you have uh, some different tools. You have the move tool so you can move around your image. Um, you have the slice tool so that if you want to create um, different slices within your images and then save those out and use them for web like uh, HTML slices then you can do that. Uh, zooming, eyedropper, different things like that. Now up here this is definitely one of the top um, most important things. You have your original which is basically what you see uh, when you have it in Photoshop and then you have your optimized. Now you're going to want to make sure that it's over here on the optimized um, unless you just want to save it as an original. If you save it as an original you can just select your file type over here and then just save it out. But since you've taken the time to come here you might as well try and optimize it somewhat. So you're just going to flip it over to the optimize tab and then you can start messing with the settings over here. Now as far as this 2-up and 4-up tab, if you go to the 2-up you can see the difference between your original and what you've um, changed with it, the optimized. And then if you go to 4-up then you can see the original, you can see 100% quality, 50% quality, and 25% quality. So we're just going to go back to the optimized tab and then I can start showing you some of these options over here. Now the main thing that you're going to be adjusting is the file type. So the first thing is um, we have JPEG. We have uh, different types. We have the uh, GIF, the JPEG, PNG8, PNG24, and then this WBMP. Um, if you go to that, you definitely wouldn't want that. It's just basically black and white pixels. So um, what you would probably be using is a JPEG. Most um, files are saved in JPEG or a PNG. Um, so, and you can also have the option of a GIF, which basically you have a lot of different options with the GIF. I'm not going to get into what a lot of those do because you can see that um, right when you switch it over to a GIF, you automatically lose some quality. So, we're going to be going with the higher uh, quality types such as JPEG and PNG24. Uh, PNG8 is similar to uh, the GIF, so again, the JPEG and PNG24 are going to be your best bet. So with the JPEG you have uh, some options. You have uh, the quality and this um, why you would change the quality is basically um, especially if you're putting in this on a website uh, you want your web page to load fast. Um, if web speed isn't an option then I would just save it at 100% quality or if uh, the image is smaller then it really wouldn't make too much of a difference. But down here um, towards the bottom of the image you can see that it says uh, 465 seconds at uh, 56.6 kilobytes per second. So that's the download speed. So at this rate of download uh, it would take 465 seconds. So obviously that's a ton of time. So we can adjust the quality of the image in order to try and um, lessen the amount of time it would take to download that. Because no one wants to sit on a website um, and wait for that to download. So if you take and you drag down the quality slider you can see that it definitely takes down the time and just taking it down to 80 which is still um, classified as very high over here in the quality settings you can barely see uh, if any uh, change in quality and it has easily cut down like we started we started up at 465 and just by dragging it down to 80 you can see that it has taken it down to 191 or put it at 80 goes down to uh, 187. So you can see that uh, just a small change in your quality can have a drastic uh, change in how long it takes to download. Now over here on the image size you can also take and adjust that right here if you don't want to um, adjust the image size within Photoshop itself. You can take and do it in this save for web and devices dialog. Um, so you can just take and make sure that the little uh, chain is there and you can just take and put it down to like say a thousand and then you're automatically going to have even less time. So you can get a more realistic um, 
appearance there. So I'm just going to bump that back up to 100. And uh, over here, I just wanted to point out that with the um, download speed, if you want to see what, um, if you have like information from your website or information on how fast most people download, um, you can set it to that so you can get an idea of what most of your users will be having uh, as their download speed. So I just have it set down here um, just because I just wanted it to um, have a larger number here in order for you guys to see what how changing this stuff can drastically change the time. So if we move on, um, you can see there's some other options. You can adjust those as needed, but mainly the quality um, and maybe even the blur. If you have a little bit of uh, pixelation, you might want to try and blur it a little bit. Those are going to be the main things you're going to adjust. So if we go down to PNG24, um, you can take and save it as that. Now the difference between the JPEG and PNG, basically saving it as a JPEG is going to be a smaller uh, file size, um, still pretty good quality, and the PNG is going to be slightly better quality, especially for some things like lines um, and text and stuff like that. PNG tends to work better for those, um, and it's also going to be a larger file size. So again, um, you can take and adjust it to try and make the um, file a little bit smaller using some different techniques. Um, but those are the main differences between those. Now, um, the major difference between them is going to be the transparency. With a PNG um, 24 or PNG 8, you can enable the transparency. And what this means is that anywhere in your document where there's uh, the checkerboard, like the uh, black and or the white and gray uh, checkerboard, it will allow you to save that out and actually have that transparent. If you saved it as a JPEG and you wanted to have that transparent background, um, it would just fill it in with white and save it. But if you had it as a PNG, then you would be able to actually save it um, and keep that transparency. So um, that's one of the major benefits of the PNG is uh, erase the background or select it out and delete it. And you can save it and still have um, the transparency and just your focus uh, there. So for, for uh, certain applications, um, the PNG transparency would be very helpful. So um, I hope you guys learned some stuff in this tutorial. Um, when you're ready to actually save out your file, you just go down here to save, and you can save it to your desktop. And uh, if you want to put it on HTML and the images, um, depending on if you sliced it, uh, that's fine. Otherwise, just leave it as images only. And you should be good to go. Save it wherever you want, and you should have a nicely optimized image for whatever your needs may be. So, hope you guys learned something in this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.